Let the heart be established with grace and not with meats. See, that's, that's, that, that's the law. That's one of the dietary laws of the old covenant. We can't establish ourselves with meats about what we eat, don't eat, touch, does not, taste not. We can't, we can't be established. We're not on a, 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 a established on the rock, I mean, when the wind and the uh, come in and, and beat against that house. If you establish with meats, that house going to fall. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing that the heart be established with grace and not with meats, which have not profited them. Under the new covenant, it doesn't profit anyone to remain tied to the old covenant for righteousness, amen, according to dietary laws. It doesn't profit anyone which have not profited them, which have not benefited them that have been occupied therein. Who are the ones that have been occupied therein? Amen. The Jewish community, those who wanted to remain under the Mosaic law and the Levitical priesthood system even after uh, uh, Christ and his death and resurrection. Amen. Amen. It has not profited them that have been occupied therein. But we have an altar. All right. See? We have an altar. Amen. And it's in Jesus Christ. In this new and living way, we have an altar. And it's called the cross of Christ. Amen? Yes. We have an altar where uh, they have no right to eat. Listen, those who want to, amen, uh, 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 try to establish themselves with meat, listen to what the Bible says. They have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. If you are still serving the tabernacle and all that comes with the tabernacle, well, what comes with the tabernacle? The, the Mosaic law and the Levitical priesthood system and all that it brings, as I said earlier, the dietary laws and uh, uh, festive days and new moons and amen and, and ceremonies and ordinances that it brings. Well, the Bible says, uh, amen, that we have an altar of the new covenant by Jesus Christ. Well, they have no right to eat. Praise God. In a minute, we're going to find out who we eat of. But if you want to follow the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, you have no right to eat of him, the one who's the bread of life. If you're going to remain in the tabernacle. Amen? Amen. We have an altar where they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. Praise the Lord. Amen. The tabernacle of God now, amen, is not made with hands. Amen, but it, it's of Christ now. Isn't that what the Bible says? Yes. Amen. The tabernacle of God is, is of Christ. We'll find that, praise the Lord, and uh, write this down in Hebrews 8 and 2, that Jesus, who sat down on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. Hebrews 8 and 2. Jesus Christ is a minister of the true tabernacle. Push the law pitched and not man. Amen. If you're, amen, uh, uh, um, as the Bible says in Hebrews 13, we have an altar. And if we are content to be occupied therein, they have no right to eat. Praise God that we have a right to eat. Amen? amen. We have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. Verse 11, for the bodies of those beasts, see, that tabernacle of the old covenant, the bodies of those what? Beasts. It's speaking of animals. The blood of bulls and goats and rams and lambs, amen, and turtle doves. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp because it's a sin offering. Amen? It's burned outside the camp. We're going to read verse 12 for you, but I'm going to back up. Wherefore, Jesus also, Jesus also suffered outside the camp because he was a sin offering, amen, that he might sanctify the people. Set us apart. Make us holy, amen, yes. with his what? Own blood, not the blood of those beasts. Are you getting this? Not the blood of those beasts, but with his own blood is what makes us holy. Not the bodies of those beasts. 
Wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people, make them holy, with his own blood, he suffered outside the gate for you and I. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. God is good. <laughs> now go to John chapter 8, the Gospel of John. Chapter 6, forgive me. John 6. John chapter 6. Because Jesus' blood is what sanctifies, makes us holy. He's our sin offering. And under the old covenant, amen, you could not, uh, 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 the, the priest, the high priest and the Levitical priest, they could not eat of it, amen, because it was a sin offering under the old covenant. But under the new covenant, I'm the, amen, this, this is a great chapter here, uh, uh, chapter 6, amen. I can spend all my time here in, in chapter 6. But let's start in verse 31. Amen. Jesus having a debate with the religious sect, the Pharisees and Sadducees and those who want to continue to follow the, the, the law. He said, and they said to Jesus, our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said unto them, truly, truly, I said unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. Moses didn't give you that. But my father gave you the true bread from heaven. See, the true bread from heaven is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen now, for the bread of God is he who cometh down from heaven. There's only one that came down from heaven. Yeah. And he became poor that we might become rich. Yeah. Spiritually rich. The bread of God is he who cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Verse 34. Then said they unto him, Lord, well, give us this bread forever. Give us this, give us this bread. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread right. of life. Amen. I am the bread of life. For he that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believes on me shall never thirst. Amen. Amen. He's the bread of life. Yes. Old Testament, Old Covenant, when there was a sin offering, no one could eat of it outside the camp. But Jesus, he's our new covenant sin offering. We are to eat of him. He's the bread of life. Amen? Yes, thank you, Lord. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Look at verse 48. Again, Jesus says in verse 48, John 6, 48, I am the bread of life. Not the bodies of those beasts under the old covenant. Mm -hmm. I am the bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. They're well, they are dead. Mm -hmm. I'm the bread of life. And this is that bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise those of us who eat of this living bread, Jesus Christ, we, we never die. Amen? Mm -hmm. For to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Today, he said to the criminal on the right, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. Amen. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, eat of himself, eat, eat of Christ, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Amen. Did he lay down his life? Did he lay down his body? Did he lay down his flesh? For the life of the world. Amen. But the Jews argued among themselves. And how can this man give us his flesh to eat? See? Thinking fleshly, not spiritual. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I said unto you, except you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Amen? Amen. It's not the blood and the bodies of those beasts. It's of Jesus Christ we live forever. Yeah. Amen? Anyone who's continued to go to the tabernacle made with hands have no right to eat of him. Look at verse 57. 
Let me back up verse 56. And he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth abides in me. And I in him. When we partake of the communion table of the Lord, mm -hmm. amen, we're saying we, we're partaking of him, amen? Mm -hmm. For it, it represents that, that, that bread and that cup represents his, his body and his blood, amen? Mm -hmm. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father has sent me and I live by the Father, amen, how do we live? Mm -hmm. We live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me or because of me. Yeah. We, we live because of Christ. Yeah. We live because of what he done outside the gate. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Amen. There was a hard teaching in the, in the Jewish synagogue. It's a hard teaching in the Jewish synagogue, but he said it there. And many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. This is a difficult saying. Who can hear? Who can understand it? Even today, 2,000 years later, there's still many, millions, billions of people, amen, don't understand that Jesus is the living bread. He's the bread of life. If we eat of him and drink of him, we live forever. And he dwells in us. Amen? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? What and if shall, I'm sorry, what and if ye shall see the Son of Man is sitting up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, make alive, gives life. The flesh profiteth nothing. Amen? Amen. The flesh of those beasts, it profited nothing. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. See how I tie in with Hebrews? Mm -hmm. It profited them nothing. It says in Hebrews they wanted to maintain, amen, the Mosaic covenant, the Levitical priesthood system. It didn't profit them. It didn't benefit them nothing. Amen? Mm -hmm. It profited them nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. Amen? And these words that we read and we study and we pray over and we live, it is spirit and life for the believer. Amen? Amen. And for all that believe. And listen to what Jesus said in verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. Amen. Jesus, the greatest preacher, teacher, apostle, whatever you want to call him, bishop, <laughs> chief shepherd. They heard him preach and didn't believe. Preachers and teachers today, don't be offended because someone don't believe what you're preaching. They didn't believe the word, the living word. He came in the volume of the book, he's preaching it, and they didn't believe him. There are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not. Amen? He knew who it was and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except they were given unto him of my father. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he said that in verse 44. And from that time, listen now, once Jesus said that, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Amen? Jesus lost some members. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pastor, if you're listening, if you lose a few members, Jesus lost some members. Praise the Lord. How did Jesus lose a member? But he did. From that time, men of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. When you don't walk with Jesus, no more. It's only destruction. It's only hell in the lake of fire when you walk no more with him. It's his, his body, his blood, not the blood of those beasts. We must continue to walk with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Who did he say it to? That means uh, Jews, Jews was there. Uh -huh. Then Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Not where shall we go? <laughs> that, that's the answer. That, that, that's, the, uh, 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 no, that's the question. To whom shall we go? Not, not where shall we go? When, when, you don't, when you walk no more with him, whom shall you, who are you going to? Amen. Glory to God. Peter said, 
Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. And we believe and we are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Give God a praise. We believe and we are sure. Amen? Amen. <laughs> to believe it to be, that word believe me to be fully persuaded. Mm -hmm. To have full confidence and trust in and reliance on it and commit commitment to it. Amen? That word sure we believe and we are sure is to be, to know absolutely, to understand completely, to know by experience and observation. We got to know by experience. That's the only way you can be sure you have to experience Christ for yourself. Yes. Yes. You can't be sure on someone else's or, or some brother, some sister testimony. Yes. Peter, amen. Peter said, we believe in our sure thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. Yes. And Jesus answered him, have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a demon, a devil. And we know he spoke of Judas Iscariot. Amen? Mm -hmm. But we know that Jesus is our sustenance for life. Yes. He provides. And not the blood. Amen. Go back to Hebrews 13. It's not the blood of bulls and goats. No. Amen? Praise God. Our hearts must be established with grace. And grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yes. And not with me. Not with me. Which have not profited them. It didn't profit them. It won't profit anyone today. Which have not profited them which have been occupied therein. Wow. And it's sad to say today, Eve, there are, there are many who are still occupied therein try, under the Mosaic law and, and the Levitical priesthood system for righteousness. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone that believes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Romans 10 and 4. Yes. Hebrews 13 and verse 10. Again, I'm reading. We have an altar. We have an altar. Amen. Well, they have no right to eat. Who is they? They that want their, amen, hearts to be established with, with meats. They have no right to eat. We serve the tabernacle. He's still serving the tabernacle of Moses. That pattern, that blueprint that was given to Moses by the angel. When we had a true tabernacle and a true sanctuary and we have an altar in Christ, well, you have no right to eat of him. For well, he's the living bread. Would you live, would give us, would you give us to live forever? Verse 11. For the bodies of those beasts, whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, see it was a sin offering, are burned, wow, outside the camp. Praise the Lord. It's burned outside the camp. Jesus, in the parable, amen, of the tenant, he, Jesus has come, but not everyone has received him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at, let's go back to Matthew 21 and 33. Matthew 21, we're going to get at the parable of the tenant farmers. Are you there? Matthew 21, 33. And it reads, there was a certain household of God who planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it. This is Jesus telling this parable. And he built a tower and he let, he let it out. Or he went and leased it out to a husbandman or a farmer and he went into a far country and when the time of the fruit drew near he sent his servant to the husbandman the farmers that they might receive the fruits of it and the husbandman took his servant 
One God sent his, amen, uh, 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 his servant to the husband, which is the prophet that came before Jesus. What did they do to him? The husband took his servant, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Amen? Old Testament prophet. But God, the Lord, continued to send to Israel. And again, verse 36, he sent other servants more than the first. And they did unto them likewise. Did the same. But last of all, he sent unto them his son. Who's his son? Jesus Christ. After all the Old Testament prophets and servants that God sent, he finally sent his son. They, they beat him, they killed him, but now he sent his son. Amen? The last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen, the vine grower, the farmers, saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Let's kill him. Come, let's kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. And not understanding, they're about to lose their inheritance. Our inheritance, our spiritual inheritance, our spiritual redemption is in Christ Jesus. But yet they, will, they want to kill him, amen? We can't walk away and never walk with him again. The, the scripture explained to us in John chapter 6, amen? Don't, don't allow anyone, don't allow any uh, false doctrine or teaching, amen, come into your life and, 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 and kill Jesus Christ in your life, amen? Yeah. Because your inheritance is in him. We're heirs with God and co-heirs with Christ. That's how we get our inheritance. It says in Romans. Let us kill him and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him. And they cast him out of the vineyard. Out of the city. See, they cast him out of the city. Outside the gates. And they slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vine of the vineyard coming, what will he do unto the, those husbandmen? As Christ was speaking to the crowd, they teaching them this parable. They said unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out of his vineyard unto other husbandmen or farmers, who shall render him the fruits in their season. Jesus said unto them, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. The stone which the builders rejected, Amen? Yeah. And he is the stone. Yeah. He's the chief cornerstone. Amen? Yeah. And, and, and he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Yeah. They rejected him. John 1 11. Amen? The builders rejected him. The same has become the head of the corner. Jesus is not a chief cornerstone. If everything is to line up, you have to have that cornerstone lined up first. Amen? Yeah. And you measure everything off the cornerstone. The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. What God is doing. How we see prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. Hallelujah. It's marvelous that we have eyes that can see and ears that can hear. And we can see the hand of the Lord at work. And we're a part of it. We're, it's marvelous. Amen. But let's make sure we remain at the true tabernacle. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, Israel, and given to a nation bringing forth the fruit thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. If you fall over Jesus Christ, if you stumble over Jesus Christ, that he is the son of the living God, he's the, the, the savior, the Messiah of the entire world, because he went outside the gate. Amen? Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to power. Amen? Amen. And when the chief priests and the Pharisees had heard his parable, they perceived that he spake of them. See, they understood. They understood. But did they repent? Did they confess and repent? Did they turn to him and ask for forgiveness and mercy? No. No. I pray if you hear God's voice today, today is the day. Don't be like the Pharisees and the chief priests. Amen. When you perceive that he spake of them, when, when you know the Spirit of God is speaking to you, come unto me, Jesus is, and I, and I will give you rest. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
Listen, but, but how did the chief priests and the Pharisees respond when they perceived that this parable had been spoken of them? Look at verse 46. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they wanted to grab him up. Those are some violent men. They sought to lay hands on him, but they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. But he was more than a prophet. He was the son of the living God. Jesus is more than a prophet. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Amen. Look at Amen. Chapter 27. He went outside the camp. For you and I, when we were what? Ungodly. When we were without strength, Romans 5 said, tells us, we were without strength, ungodly, we are, are sinners and an enmity toward God, enemies of God, Jesus still laid down his life and went outside the camp for you and I. The Bible says he suffered outside the gate, outside the city of Jerusalem, the city of God, amen? Yeah. Well, let's take some time to see how he suffered, amen? Look at verse 26. Hebrews, I'm sorry, Matthew 27 and 26. They released Barabbas. Okay. Unto them. Amen. It was a tradition that Pilate would release one or the other criminals. They chose Barabbas, an insurrectionist, over Jesus. How many of you know Israel is choosing another insurrectionist yes, over Christ. Yes. They're doing it again today right before our very eyes. Yes. Amen? Yes. If you are paying any attention to what's going on in Israel and Jerusalem and who they are worshiping and, and who they love from this country, they chose another insurrectionist. Amen? Yes. Then release he Barabbas unto them when, he had scourged, when they had scourged Jesus, when they had flogged and beat Jesus, uh, uh, he delivered him to be crucified. Amen. Let's see what happened to him outside the city. Look at verse 26. They stripped him and put him on a scarlet robe. And when he had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. They mashed it down on his head. Outside the gate for you and I. Outside the city for you and I. He suffered outside for you and I. They stripped him and put him on a scarlet robe as though he was a king. Amen? Mm -hmm. This is your king. And they, when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and, and, a, and a reed in his right hand. Not a scepter, but a reed. Something flimsy. And they bowed their knee before him and marked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they spit upon him. Do you hear that? They spit upon the Son of God. They spit upon God himself. They spit upon him and took the reed and hit him on the head. And after that, they, they had marked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. Amen. And as they came out, they found the man of Siren, Simon by name. Him they compared to bear his cross. This is a black man here. And when they were come unto a place called Gal Golgotha, that is to say the place of, of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, to try to ease the pain. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Jesus is our great high priest, New Testament high priest. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. Amen. But that's why Jesus is, is our high priest who, who's blameless and holy and, and righteous because he, he, he felt the, the, uh, the pain of this scourging and this beating. He would not take the vinegar, amen, that would ease the pain. And they crucified him and, and part of his garment, casting lot that it might be filled, fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, they parted my my garments among them and upon my vesture did they cast lots and they sat down and washed him and they said over his head 
his accusation. But what's the truth? This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Amen? Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand, another on the left. And they that passed by, they ridiculed, reviled him, wagging their heads. People who just passing by, coming to see the crucifixion. They mocked Jesus also, saying, Thou that destroys the temple and builds it in three days, save yourself, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Praise the Lord. Praise God. He didn't come down from that cross. Amen? He stayed on that cross until it was what? It is finished. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and the elders said, He saved others. Himself he cannot say, if he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. Amen. Not the signs, not the miracles, not the wonders he performed, not raising the dead, not feeding 5,000 and 3,000, not opening blinded eyes, not healing those with leprosy, not healing those with, 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 uh, that, that were paralyzed. Amen. He did so many things that the Bible says the whole world could contain it. They didn't believe that, but if he come down off the cross, oh, we'll believe now. Do you believe that they would have believed? No. Because he did come down. But he got up again. Amen. Look at verse 44. Well, at verse 43. They say he trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. He trusted in God. Let him deliver. If he were happy, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Amen. We know that one of the thieves were, amen, came around and uh, after hours and, and, and asked the Lord to remember him when he came into his kingdom. Amen. But initially, both thieves were, amen, ridiculed and mocking the Lord. The land, the sixth hour. There was darkness over the land until the ninth hour for three hours. Wow. And Jesus cried out in verse 46, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken him? Forsaken me. Look at verse 48. And straightway one of them ran, took a sponge, and filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave him to a drink. Amen. And the rest said, Let let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. And Jesus, when he had cried again with the loud voice, what did he do? He gave up the ghost. He died. And behold, when he died, the veil of the temple was torn into from the top to the bottom. Symbolizing we have access now. Yes. In the Holy of the Holy. We can come bold into the throne of grace. Amen. We have access now. Behold, the veil of the temple was, was torn from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake. And the rocks were torn. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints who slept arose. When Jesus died, all this occurred. Amen? And they came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Praise the Lord. Because he's the resurrection and the life. You know what Jesus says? Yes. Martha, Mary, I'm the resurrection and the life. Yes. And, and Lazarus came out of the tomb. Yes. And, and he had to call him by name because uh, no telling who would have got up. <laughs> now, listen now. He went into the, uh, after the resurrection, they went into the Holy City and appeared unto many. Look at verse 54. Now, when the centurion, this cruel Roman tough centurion and they that were with him soldiers watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done they feared greatly saying truly this was the son of God amen this Roman centurion and his soldiers with him said what even the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the lawyers and the scribes Refuse to say. Do you see that? Those who had the scrolls. And even today, some will say, Jesus is not the Son of God. Some today will even say, 2,000 years later will say, oh, he's just a prophet. 
Oh, we, we agree with you that there, there was a, a, a figure, a, one who walked in Israel. I mean, there was a man, but he was just a man. He was just a prophet. Well, this Roman centurion have agreed with God more than many today has. There are many who would not accept and, 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 and believe in their heart and confess it with their mouth that Jesus is the son of the living God. Okay. It happened, it happened all outside the gate. Amen? For you and I, when we were without strength and ungodly, sinners at enmity against God. This is what Jesus did for you and I. This is what Jesus did for you and I. When we were in the world without covenant and without a God. This is what Jesus did for you and I. Amen. Hmm. The testator had to die. It's because of Jesus' blood. Go back to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Look at verse 16. Let me start at verse 15. Hebrews 9 and 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He's the one that's standing in the gap. Jesus is the mediator of the New Testament. That by the means of death, see, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, See, all the transgressions and sins that were under the First Testament, under the Mosaic Law and the Levitical priesthood system that was covered by the blood of those beasts, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance because of what Jesus did. Amen? Because he's the mediator of the New Testament, they, they received the promise of eternal inheritance too. All those who died in faith in the, in the old covenant because of Jesus, amen, the, the Levitical priesthood system, the Mosaic law, didn't remove the sin for them. Amen. Why are, why are some today, amen, uh, attempting again to go up under that system that, amen, that took Jesus' blood, Jesus' death, Jesus' resurrection for them to receive eternal, eternal inheritance, amen? Do you see that? Let me read it again. For this cause, he's the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, his death, for the redemption of the transgression, the sins committed, that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. They didn't receive it under the first testament. They received their eternal inheritance under the second testament. By Jesus Christ, as you and I. Amen? Yes. So where a testament is, there must be a necessity by the death of a testator. And Jesus is our testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while a testator liveth. Praise the Lord. Amen. That Jesus died for the sins of the world. Amen. Amen. And those that died under that first testament, they also receive, amen, their eternal, eternal inheritance, their eternal redemption through Jesus Christ. They didn't receive it up under the Mosaic law. They didn't receive it up under the Levitical priesthood system and all that it brings. They received it under Christ. Amen. But yet we have we have some today trying to go back up under it, but there is no salvation under it. You can't read, there's no salvation under the blood of bulls and goats. Amen. Look at verse twelve, then chapter nine. Amen. Let's read verse nine, uh, 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 Hebrews nine, eleven, and twelve. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. There it is again. Not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption 
Trust. There it is. Pick God to play with. Amen. Jesus suffered outside the camp. Amen. In the old covenant, for a sin offering, the, the, the high priest and, and, and the Levitical priest could not eat of that sin offering. But of the, in the new covenant, amen, Jesus is our sin offering and he's our sustenance for life. So he's the bread of life. Amen. He's our bread. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And Jesus was an offering for the world. Not just for Israel. For the world. His cross was planted in the world. Not just in Jerusalem. Amen. And the veil was torn. We all have access. And, and it tells us here in Hebrews 4 and, and 16 that we can all come boldly to the throne of grace to attain mercy and help in our time of need. Amen. Amen. See, it's for all men who believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. Amen. So what do we have to do? We have to go outside the gate where he is. We have to go outside the city where he is. Amen. We have to go where Christ is and we have to go away from the what? M Mosaic law and, and the Levitical priesthood system. Amen. We have to go away from that. Amen. And all this is traditions and, and rituals and ordinances. We got to go away from that because it, it benefits them not. It benefits no one. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me and learn of me. We got to learn of him. Amen. We can't cling to that old sacrificial system and all these ordinances and, and laws and rituals. Amen. And traditions. No. It's in Jesus Christ. Amen. It's in Jesus Christ. Let us not betray Jesus again. Let's not do worse than Judas. You betray your master with a kiss? No, let's not betray him with a kiss. He betrayed him with 30 pieces of silver. You know what? According to the old covenant law, you're finally in Levitical, in the book of Leviticus, you pay someone 30 pieces of silver for a wounded farm animal. If I if I if you loan me your farm animal and, and, and I wound your animal while he's working for me, I break his leg, I was to pay you 30 pieces of silver for the animal. That was the offer for Jesus and Judas took it. For a wounded farm animal. Not even a healthy one, a wounded one. But yet even today some are betraying Jesus for less than 30 pieces of silver. Amen? But let's not do like Judas and go and hang ourselves and commit suicide. Let us come unto him. All you that burden and heavy laden, Jesus is a prayer, and I will give you rest. Amen? That's, what, that's what, what, they, what they did to Jesus when they took animals and sacrificed them before they took him into the, amen, into the tabernacle. Wow. But through Jesus' sacrifice, you and I, we are made what? Holy. We are made righteous by Jesus' sacrifice. Praise God. Amen? Look at Hebrews chapter 2. Go to Hebrews chapter 2 and look at verse 11. Through Jesus, by Jesus, for you and I, through his death and his resurrection, through the shedding of his blood, we are sanctified. Look at Hebrews 2 and look at verse, let me read verse 10 and 11. For it became him for whom are all things. See, because of Jesus, all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory. It's through Jesus. Not because of the blood of bulls and goats. It's through Jesus. He brings many sons into glory to make the captain. He's the captain of, of our salvation. He's the author and the finisher of our salvation. Amen? Yeah. 
He's the captain or the author of their salvation and perfect through suffering or complete. We are complete through him. Amen. Yeah. For both he has sanctified Christ and they who are sanctified, you and I, are all of one. Do you read that? He that sanctified and they who are sanctified, Christ and you and I, are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Amen? Christ is not ashamed to call you and I, who was once without strength, ungodly, sinners, and an enmity against God, Jesus Christ now is not ashamed to call us brethren. Even though we're living in this life, we're living for God, amen, we're not blaming, we're not perfect, we sin, we fall short of the glory sometimes, but he's not ashamed to call you his brother. Let's make sure we stay at the right tabernacle. We have an altar. Jesus is not ashamed to call you his brother. Look at chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 10. Hebrews 10 and 10. Hebrews 10 and 10. Let me read that. Well, let me read verse 9. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. Do you see that? The first should be taken away. The first should be taken away. That which was of the, 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 the blood of those beasts. It should be taken away. That he may establish the second. You can't establish the second as long as one can keep the first. He takes away the first that he might establish the second. Verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified. We are sanctified through the second. We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. Amen. The blood of the boys and girls can never take away sins. Look at verse 11. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sin. See, those, those offerings they made in the old covenant, it never took away the sin. We just read in chapter 9, amen, that through the death of Christ for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament because it, those, those offerings of the, of the first testament never took away the sin. It was through Jesus Christ that they received their eternal, amen, inheritance and redemption. Yes, yes. Same way you and I must receive it. Look at verse 14. For by one offering, himself, Christ, for by one offering, he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Praise the Lord. By one offering. We are what? Sanctified. Praise the Lord. Jesus endured that suffering outside the gate for you and I. Amen? Yes. As he stood before Pilate and was betrayed and ridiculed and mocked and crucified and scourged. Amen? The Bible tells us look at 1 Peter chapter 4. chapter 4. Hmm. And we'll begin in verse 12. First Peter 4 and 12. For we are in the last hour of the last day, saints. The world is waxing colder. The love of many is waxing colder and colder. It's so much sin and evil and wickedness that we never could have imagined a few decades ago. Beloved, 1 Peter 4 and 12, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Amen. There's a fiery trial coming for the church. We're going to have to persevere. Will Christ find faith on the earth when he returns? 
Hold on to your faith. Beloved, thinking about strange concerning the fire of trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Amen. We just read, amen, Matthew 27. Look what happened to Jesus. Amen. When there's one world government, one world religion, and one world economy come into place, and amen, and we already know they already have this uh, Fed now, and they're going to take money out of the system, and you got to sign up for this system, and, and uh, uh, if not, you can't buy, sell, or trade. It's here, thanks. Amen. Think it's not strange. Just remember what happened to Jesus. Think it's not strange, but rejoice. When, the, when that fire will try to come, rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ, as much as you are a uh, share in Christ, in Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. You see why I go back uh, uh, at times and, and, and read over uh, Christ's crucifixion, that we got to rejoice, amen, be partakers of his suffering, just to remind us of Christ's suffering, amen. That we don't think it's a strange thing concerning the fire trial, which is going to try us in this last hour. Yes. But in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. That's how you're going. To, that's how we're going to persevere, and that's how we're going to hold on to our faith. Amen. Verse fourteen: If you be reproached uh, for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. If any man suffer as a Christian, okay. if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Amen. Let him not be ashamed. Make sure you are Christian. A Christ follower. Yes. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. What's that? For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. See? The judgment from this world is going to begin at the house of God. And if it first begins at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where should the ungodly and the sinner appear? Amen. We know in discretion. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls. Yes. Commit to the keeping of your souls. Amen. Yes. Yes. To him in well doing as a, unto a faithful, wow, creator. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. We got to consider him. The Bible says we got we must consider him. Go back to, to Hebrews chapter 12. Consider him. Let's read verse 2 and 3. We look unto Jesus. As these fiery trials are coming in these last days and last hour of these last days, amen, we're going to do what? We're going to look unto Jesus, yes. the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's not ashamed to call you and I his brother, amen? Yes. Despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him when the fiery trials come saint. Consider him. Consider what we just read in verse 27. Consider that he became poor that we might become rich. Consider that he had no place to lay his head. Consider that he was hungry. He was tired. He was, he was weary. Amen. They were to throw him off a cliff. Amen. Consider him that he was betrayed. Consider him that endured such a contradiction of sinners. Jesus endured a contradiction of sinners. He came to his own. And his own received him not. They didn't believe. They, they, they betrayed him. Consider him that endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest ye be weary and faint in your own mind. So we go after to learn to consider him. Consider Christ. And what he endured for you and I. 
nails in his hands, nails in his feet, beaten, spit upon. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, they, they pulled his beard out. Consider him. Amen? So you won't become weary and faint in, in your mind. Praise the Lord. Mm. Consider him. Look at chapter 3. Hebrews 3. Consider him. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And we're closing here. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 3. In verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, that's you and I, okay. sanctified, we, we're holy brethren, Amen. partakers of the heavenly calling, mm -hmm. consider, that's that word, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. Yes. Consider him yes. as he suffered outside the gate. As the fiery trial that are coming into our life in this in these last days, in this last hour, consider him that Jesus is the apostle and high priest of uh, our confession. Amen? Yes. And his name is Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen? Yes. Who was faithful to him that appointed him. And it was the Father who appointed him. He was faithful to him. And we're going to have to remain faithful to Christ. Yes. Consider him. Give God a praise. I can go on, but give God a praise. I'm going to stop here. Praise the Lord. I can go on and on. I love the book of Hebrews. Praise the Lord. I pray that you heard God's still small voice. I pray that your spirit has been, amen, revitalized and that you will, amen, have this knowledge and wisdom and understanding, this comfort, this edification and encouragement that comes from the word of God by the spirit of God. Amen. We're going to have to consider him. In these last days, in this last hour, God, amen, we thank you. Let's close now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the living word, Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that you reminded us again that we are to consider him. We thank you, Lord, that we have an altar. Praise God. And our hearts are established by grace, not with meats. And we pray for those, Father God, who, amen, who are still occupied therein. Even though, amen, it doesn't profit them nothing. But we pray for them. We lift them up to you. We stand in the gap, Lord, that as they read the, 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 the book of Moses that the, the, and they receive Jesus Christ, the, the veil will be removed from their eyes, the Bible tells us in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. So we're going to continue to pray. So we know that you have that 99. You want that one. So we were all at one time that one. So we thank you, Lord, for victory we have in Christ at Calvary. Through his blood, by his body. We thank you for our eternal redemption, eternal inheritance that's in Christ. And no other. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord.